Path tracing is a physically based Monte Carlo renderer. It simulates light bounces for unbiased photoreal results, but it needs samples to remove noise. Unreal's Path Tracer is implemented as a progressive hardware accelerated mode in the engine built on Unreal's ray tracing stack. That's why we usually run it on an RTX class GPU for practical speeds. All right, I've got a project open here. It's called Abandoned Apartment, and you can grab it from the Fab Marketplace if you want to follow along. Start by opening your project settings and ensuring that path tracing and support hardware ray tracing are both enabled. I'm using an NVIDIA RTX GPU, but any graphics card with ray tracing support will work. And while you're here, double check that SM6 is turned on under the D3D12 shader formats. That's important for proper ray tracing support. Once they're enabled, Unreal Engine might ask you to restart. Just go ahead and restart the engine. Now click on the Lit Mode button and select Path Tracing. And just like that, we've got Path Tracing active in our viewport. You'll also notice a progress bar at the bottom that shows the progress of the frame as it's being rendered with Path Tracing. Next, if you have a post-process volume, go ahead and select it from the Outliner. But in my case, I'll be using the camera instead. Both have the same settings for Path Tracing, so use whichever one you've got. Once you've selected it, Open the Details panel and search for Path Tracing. Here you'll see a few key settings, Max Bounces, Samples Per Pixel, and Max Path Intensity. By default, Max Bounces is set to 32. That means each light ray can bounce up to 32 times between surfaces before it reaches the camera and contributes to the final image. Next we have Samples Per Pixel. This controls how many light rays are traced for each pixel. Higher values give you a cleaner image with less noise, but they take longer to render. And below that, max path intensity. This limits how bright each light path can get, which helps reduce flickering or bright noise spots in your render. If it's set too low, your lighting might look dull, so keep it balanced. These three are the true huntsmen of path tracing, the ones that hit performance the hardest. So we always need to find the right balance for these values, whether it's for a game, or a cinematic. Otherwise, it'll kill your machine before the render even finishes. If I want the scene to load faster, I usually lower these settings. For example, let's set max bounces to eight and samples per pixel to 512. Now you can see the scene loads much faster than before. And max path intensity. Only change that if you really need to. The default value usually works just fine. Now let's enable reference depth of field. And if I lower the max path intensity to one, you'll notice a difference. Though in my case, it doesn't change much because the scene is already pretty bright with all the lights. Next, enable reference atmosphere and set it to true. Now, just to explain, these reference settings basically tell Unreal to use the same high quality path traced version of effects like depth of field and atmosphere. There's also a denoiser here. I don't really use it, but it can help clean up noise in the viewport. And sometimes it can even hurt your performance and the results aren't that great. So I'd suggest not using it. All right, now that we've covered these settings, let's move on to the rendering part. First, open the Movie Render Queue. If it's not enabled, just go to Plugins and search for Movie Render Queue to turn it on. Also turn on Movie Render Queue DLSS support if you've got an NVIDIA card. For AMD users, enable FSR and give the engine a quick restart. If the DLSS plugin doesn't show up for you, I already have a full installation guide on my channel. I'll leave the video link in the description so you can check it out and learn how to install it. And sadly, I don't have an AMD card, so I can't make a video on that unless AMD decides to sponsor me a high-end PC like NVIDIA did. NVIDIA didn't, but hey, there's always a first time for a company to sponsor a good YouTuber. Anyway, let's open the movie Render Queue. Here, click on Unsaved Config. Then go ahead and delete the JPG sequence and deferred rendering options. Now click on the plus button and add a PNG sequence. Next, add DLSS and set the performance mode to quality. And let's also add anti-aliasing. And don't forget the most important one, Path Tracer. You can also add high resolution and game overrides. I'm removing game overrides here 
but you can keep it enabled if your game displays UI elements or loading screens that you don't want to capture. It also makes sure your render uses cinematic quality textures. Now let's set the sample count for our render. I'm setting the spatial sample count to 69 and the temporal sample count to 10, which multiplies to a total of 690 samples per frame in the final render. Next, enable override anti-aliasing. Also, turn on use camera cut for warm up and render warm up frames and set that value to 256. Now for the output, choose any location you want. Just make sure it has enough storage space. Set the output resolution based on your needs, but keep in mind, the higher the resolution, the slower the render. Now click accept and you're ready to start the render. Once it begins, each frame should take around one to two minutes to render. Now let's say some of you don't have access to DLSS or FSR. In that case, first remove the DLSS setting, then go to anti-aliasing and set the spatial sample count to 159. This will increase your render time, but you'll get better quality results with these settings. When I tested it without DLSS, Unreal took around five to six minutes to render each frame. In my last path tracing video, I used temporal super resolution for anti-aliasing instead of leaving it at none. Someone commented saying that path tracing doesn't support anti-aliasing. And yeah, technically it's meant for real time rendering, but TSR actually makes path tracing renders faster and cleaner. Even though it was originally designed for games, path tracing is an offline rendering method. But if something works, why not take advantage of it instead of blaming me for using what they didn't think of trying? And guys, copying my sample count can help you get started, but every scene reacts differently. So always experiment with your values until you find what looks best. Next, I'm planning to make a video on NVIDIA's real-time path tracing. Let me know if you're interested in seeing real-time path tracing in action.